I was trying to think of a clever network policy pun for this intro, but nothing comes to me. In this video, we're going to be talking about network policies. Now, network policies can be a confusing topic to start, but I'm going to try and make this as clear as possible because, like I say, they're confusing. They can be confusing to start with. And they tripped me up a few times when I was first learning about it, mainly because I was focusing on the service ports I was getting instead of the pod ports. And network policies affect the pod level. That's something I'm going to stress now. I'm going to stress it multiple times in the video, and I'm even going to add it in at the end just for good measure because that is the number one thing to understand about network policies when you're applying them is you're dealing with the pod level ports the pod level network that's what you're hitting not the service level so if you've got a service listening on port 8080 and you've got a pod listening on port 80 it's the pod on port 80 that you need to be worried about not the service on port 8080 even if you're hitting that as an endpoint it's the pod you need to deal with okay now it's a fairly long one not too long but fairly long this video and i really don't want you to fall asleep by the end so let's just get into it now before we start i just want to cover a few things that have changed since the last video so in the previous video and all the previous ones before that you would have seen that i would have had a load of numbered directories with the name of the video basically as the title that was starting to become a little bit repetitive there was a lot of stuff in there that i was just copying and pasting into the next video because i was reusing stuff so i figured hey you know what let's just clean this up so i have i've created a cluster infra directory which has the cluster issuers external DNS and the metrics bits that we deployed. And I've created a tools directory, which contains the DNS utils. And I've created a workloads directory. The workload directory contains extras, which has cron job, daemon set, jobs, persistent volume claims, and stateful sets. The reason I've done this is because I want to keep everything that I've done so far. I'm also going to put it up into GitHub at some point. Speaking of GitHub, I just got accepted into the organization for Kubernetes SIGs. Good stuff. So that if you want to look at any of it that I've done already, you can. Or if anyone else wants to come along and look at it, then they can. But this is stuff that we have done. I didn't want to just go and delete a load of stuff. So it's all in there. Now you might be looking at it going, yeah, but there's some stuff missing. What about the affinity? What about the init containers that we did in the last episode? You know, all that sort of stuff. Well, I've kept it. What I've done is I've integrated it, including the scaling bits into the existing resources. So we were using databases and web services. So it was Maria DB and Nginx. What I've done is I've copied them, renamed the Nginx one to web across the board. You can see here, web, 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 web. I've got the update strategy in there. I've got the affinity in there and I have an init container in there, which checks the new SQL service to make sure it's up. So we've kept the elements of those tutorials and I've then also just got the service in there. I don't have the no port service anymore, but they are just a couple of line changes in the service. So that's fine. In the database, I have the load balancer service, so that's fine. And I've renamed it to SQL across the board. So instead of it being MariaDB, it's SQL because at some point I will convert it from MariaDB to Postgres. Not in this episode, but at some point I will. And again, I've kept the affinity. I've kept everything as it was, just renamed everything to SQL, but the name of the container in both cases have remained the same. So it was Nginx and MariaDB. And that's basically it. Everything else is the same. I've kept the config map, just renamed it to web. I've kept the horizontal pod auto scaler, just renamed it to web. And I've got the ingress here, just renamed it to web. That's it. Nothing else has changed. Just wanted to clear that up before we got going, because I'm going to be using these resources moving forward in every other tutorial that I do and only adding bits as I need to. Okay. With that in mind, we will start looking at network policies. So let's jump over to the documentation. And here we have some documentation on network policies, which I will leave in the link below. The most important thing I need to say first is that you must have a compatible network plugin to do most of the stuff in this doc. Now I'm using Cilium. There's a few things that are missing out of Cilium that will mean that some of the examples I'm going to show you won't actually work, but I'm still going to show you the examples anyway, so that you can have a play around with them if you're using something like Coleco. Now to my knowledge, Coleco supports everything in here. So you should in theory be able to use them over there. So if something doesn't work, it's not because I've done it wrong. It's because, I mean, it could be because I've done it wrong. I'm not saying I'm perfect, obviously, but it's more likely that Cilium doesn't support it. And I have hit a few edge cases where that has been the case. Now, they are planning on supporting things. They've written their own network policies to allow you to get around these problems, but I won't be getting into them today because this is about the Kubernetes network policies. And if you're doing the exam, this is absolutely required. You need to know how to do this. And this documentation is absolutely required reading. Have a look through this if you're doing the exam. If you're not, just get familiar with it at the very least because they're really useful. They really do help with security. You can block traffic in every direction. So 
What are network policies? Well, the one I just said, they block traffic, they allow traffic. It happens at the pod level and you can say, I want ingress traffic. So traffic that's allowed into the pod from a certain location or entity. And I want to be able to send traffic through to another entity, but only a specific place. So for example, you can say, I want a certain pod to be able to communicate with another pod. You can say, I want a pod from a certain namespace to be able to communicate with a certain pod or all pods in a namespace. You can say, I want a certain set of IPs or a certain set of ports and things like that. It's, it's really granular the way you can get. Yeah, they're, they're quite powerful if you start building them up and they're additive as well. So if you deploy four network policies in one namespace, they will all get added together. What I've just said is pretty, pretty much that bit there. Two sorts of pod isolation is the ingress and egress traffic I was just talking about. So you can allow traffic in from certain locations or deny it. And you can do the same with the egress, which is outgoing traffic. And it's always at the pod level, remember. There's an example resource here. This is basically saying that you've got a pod selector here, which says any pods in the namespace of default that have this label, apply this policy to. And we're saying that we're allowing traffic from any IP within this block, except this particular one, this particular block, or any pod from any namespace with the label that has project as the key and my project as the value, or any pod in this namespace that has the label where the key is rolled and the value is front end. And by, by this namespace, I mean the default namespace. And we're saying we're only allowing traffic to port 6379. It's also allowed to send traffic out of any pod with this label to any IP address in this range on port 5978. The to and from work with the theory of and and or. So that sounds like a weird thing to say, but I promise it makes sense in my head. So when I say and and or, what I mean is this is an and statement. This is an or statement. And the reason is what we're saying here is that let's let's say this is in the default namespace again and it's targeting all pods. We're saying that we're allowing traffic to all pods in the default namespace when the traffic comes from a namespace that has the label with a key of user and a value of Alice and the pod that it's coming from is a pod that has the label with a key of role and a value of client. So that pod has to exist within this namespace. In this case, what we're saying is the same thing, but instead of that pod in that namespace, we're saying any pod in that namespace or a pod in the current namespace the network policy is deployed in that has a label of role equals client. That's that's what we're saying here. That's where the and and or comes in. So this has to be a pod in this namespace. This can be any pod in the current namespace. Let's say it's in default, then that pod has to be in the default namespace or any pod from this namespace with this label. That's what's happening there. If you have any doubt, do a kubectl describe. It does a bit of a description there and I'll show you how that looks when we get around to deploying some bits. And we can do deny all, we can do allow alls, we can do deny egress and ingress, whichever way you want you want to do it. And there is, you, you can combine them together. There is targeting range of ports and IP blocks and things like that. And again, this is one of those things where the network plugin has to support it because that's the thing that's doing this for you. And if your network plugin doesn't support it, you're going to see some issues as you go along. And there's a bunch of stuff that you can't do as well. So they're all listed here. Now we've got all that out of the way, obviously read through this yourself. It's important that you understand how this works because you're going to need to do this if you're doing the exam. There's some recipes here, if you like, for common ones. There's a bunch of different ones here. Like I could go through any one of these, pick one and show you an example, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing my own. So I've created a file called MP and that's empty at the moment. I've deployed this web resource here. This is just a normal one. All I've done is commented out the affinity, anti-affinity and the init container because I don't want them to get in the way should I decide to deploy another web pod later. But other than that, it's exactly the same. It all listens on port 80, nothing fancy going on. This is in the learning namespace. I've also deployed the DNS utils pod in the learning namespace and I've also done it in the default namespace. So just show you i'll do kubectl get pod namespace learning and we'll see that i've got dns utils and web and if i do the same in the default namespace you'll see i've got dns utils so that's everything up and running ready to go let's go ahead and create some network policies although before we do let's see what traffic is allowed i've named these tabs learning so this is going to be my learning namespace this is going to be my default namespace and this is just going to be stuff from my pc just to show you what traffic will be allowed and what won't so let's start with kubectl execute it and we'll do the namespace learning and we're gonna go for DNS utils with a bash command. And we'll go ahead and copy that, drop that in the default namespace, delete the namespace, and we're in each pod. Okay, so we've got the web service we can query and I'm gonna do curl HTTP colon forward slash forward slash web. That works. We're in the learning namespace, so that's all local to the namespace. It should work fine. In here, I'm gonna to have to do dot learning on the end because we're in a default namespace and that works fine. And for good measure, we'll do kubectl get service and the namespace learning. We'll grab this node port and we'll do curl HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.211. 
And let's get rid of that typo and put the port on the end. There we go. So it works for my PC as well. So everything works. That's absolutely cool. I'm fine. That's what we want. Or is it? Do we want to maybe start restricting some traffic? I kind of do. That's why we're here with doing network policies, right? So to do that, what we can do is we can write a default deny policy. So this will be something to deny everything. So I'm going to go ahead and we will drop an API version in. The API version is networking.katester.io forward slash v1. The kind is network policy and the metadata. We're going to give it a name of deny all and the namespace is going to be learning. Now, spec. What's our spec going to be? Well, as I say, there's pod selectors. So we can do pod selector. Do we want to select a particular pod or hit all the pods in the namespace? At the moment, I'm going to go for every pod in the namespace because this is a deny all, not just deny a particular pod. So we're going to say every single pod in the namespace. And to do that, we just pass an empty object in. And then we want the policy type. So policy types, we can say ingress or egress or both. So what would that look like? Let's start with ingress first. Let's just see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this. And to do that, I'll do QTTL, apply, F, workloads, main, network policy. So let's go ahead and apply that. We'll just describe that first before we do any testing so you can see what things start to look like. So we've got this pod selector here that specifies none, which means all, which is a weird way of wording it, I know. But when it says none, it means everything. And then allowing ingress traffic, none. So no pods are selected for isolation, which means all pods are selected for isolation. I know it makes no sense, but I promise it will at some point once you've done this often enough and we're not affecting egress traffic at all. If you don't specify a policy type, for example, if I did this, it would automatically apply to ingress. And then I could just do something like egress and then supply some rules, for example, and then it would apply to egress as well. But it's always good habit so that anyone who comes along and reads it can understand what's going on. So we always put policy types in, in my opinion, but technically you don't need to. Okay, so let's see how that looks. What happens now? So I'm denying all, all ingress traffic. So in the learning namespace, can I query from DNS utils to the web pod? No, because remember this is at a pod level. I'm applying this policy to all pods. So even in the same namespace, I'm saying that the web pod, for example, in this case, is not allowed to receive any ingress traffic. That includes from the other pods in the same namespace. I think we know what's gonna happen in the other ones now. All three of them will fail because we're denying all egress traffic. What about if I do curl, I should get the headers, do a redirect and do HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash google.com. So that works from the default namespace as we would expect because we're not applying any network policies. How about the learning namespace? Well, yes, of course, because we're not applying any egress traffic network policies there. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So I'll apply that and we will go ahead back and run that command. So from the learning namespace, fail we can no longer egress out. And what about here? Well, that still works again because we're not applying anything to the default namespace. So that was obviously gonna work. But this is important now because it means we can't send traffic out from any pod and we can't receive any traffic in from any pod. Now you might sit there and go, well, what's the point in that? Well, the point in that is if you're just running batch jobs that don't need any communication in or out and are just processing something on a disk, for example, on a persistent volume, well, that's fine. Stick it in a namespace, lock it down, no one's getting in or out. That is a reason you could do this. So there is use cases for it. Now, what about if we decided, yeah, but we, we still want to be able to access it from another namespace, for example. So we don't want to be able to egress out. We don't want to be able to ingress in. But yeah, maybe, maybe that web is actually an API endpoint that will receive traffic, do some stuff, and then return a response. Well, maybe our ingress resource, not the ingress traffic, but the resource, you know, the actual resource itself that you can define URLs in that we've done before. Maybe traffic comes in through there, hits the service, that goes to a pod in default namespace, which then sends a request over to the web pod in the learning namespace. That does some stuff on the API backend and sends a response through, which then goes back to the user. Well, in that case, we need to be able to allow traffic from the pod in the default namespace. So I'm going to go ahead back over here. We will duplicate that so I don't have to write it again. And we will say allow default. So now we're going to say we want the web pod. I could do all pods here, but I'm going to be a bit more specific and say I'm going to match labels. And the label is going to match is app web because this will need to match the webs pods, not the d deployment, but the pods here, the label app web. And we want to match that. So this will only apply to any pods that have the label app equal to web. That's it. No other pods will be affected by this. The rest of them will just be denial. And we're going to say ingress traffic. So I'm going to now add an ingress rule. And that rule is going to be from where are we coming from? Well, we could say the namespace selector and we could say match labels again. 
and the label would be uh, well, I don't know what what's the label for a namespace. Do, do we do we know any labels for a namespace? Did we apply any? Well, I didn't, but the control plane did when I created the namespaces. So if I do get namespace and show labels, which I can spell without a zero, there we go. We'll see here that every single namespace that gets created gets a corresponding label with the name of the namespace attached to it. Brilliant. We're in the default namespace, so I'm going to grab that one. And JetBrains is going to yeah, I thought it would. So let me just put that in quotes first. If anyone from JetBrains ever watches these videos at any point please fix that i realize you're probably detecting objects at these points but you know come on come on just you know come on anyway tiny mini rant over we are basically saying that any namespaces that have the labels where the key is equal to this here kubernetes.io forward slash metadata.name and the value is equal to default which as we can see from the results down here only one has that any traffic from that is allowed to ingress in and talk to the pod that has a label of app equals web. That's it, that's all we're gonna write here. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that now. So now we've got two. And remember these are additive, so this will be on top of this. So everything will be denied other than this rule here. So let's go ahead and test that now. So can we do it from here? Still no, can we do it from here though? Yes. So now we're allowing traffic there. What about from my PC? Still no. So what we're saying now is that I would have to go through a pod in the default namespace to be able to access the API that sits in the learning namespace. That's what we're doing now. So that's secured that API. There's no traffic getting to that API unless it comes from a pod in the default namespace. The problem we've got there is that all pods in the default namespace can do it. So maybe we need to just tweak this a little bit further. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna do default here. I'm gonna do hyphen test on that, hyphen test on that and that will be fine. I'll go ahead and do kubectl apply f and I'll do tools and we'll DNS utils. Okay, so now we've got two DNS utils in the default namespace. I only want the one that's deployed with the label at DNS utils to be able to communicate with my API. Let's imagine this is actually our web in this case and any other pod shouldn't be able to communicate with the web API. That's it, that's the rule. Okay, we've got this. So we can restrict this even further. We can say any from the namespace default and remember that and the pod selector in that namespace should match the label. Also match expressions works here, by the way. So I don't know if you remember back on the affinity lesson, we talked about match expressions. That also works. You can do expressions or labels, just a quick side note there. But here I'm gonna say only pods that match the label app DNS utils that come from a namespace that match the label this, I'm not reading all that out again, is allowed to communicate with this pod. So let's go and apply that now. But before I do, I've just spotted match labels, not match label. Okay, so we'll apply that and we will jump back over to the terminal. We'll bring up this other tab that I've got open here and I'll do kubectl, execute it, and then DNS utils hyphen test, and we'll do bash. I'll quickly install curl. And now that's done, I'll rename this to default test and move this over here. So now we've got DNS utils and DNS utils test. We set it up so that only DNS utils or only a pod with the label app, which is equal to DNS utils from this namespace should be able to communicate with web. Did it work? Let's find out. So if I curl this, that worked. What about from here? fails. So you can see now how much more refined we can get. We can really start to refine this further. I can restrict this even further still. So if I wanted to say deploy a web test, for example, let's go ahead and deploy web test. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of those in there. And we'll do a web test here and we'll do it on port 8080. And I'm going to do QCTL. In fact, I'll just go up one, change that for web and apply that. What we should find is that, so let me just jump back over here and make sure that is actually correct. So we should have one on port 80. I'm going to show the labels as well. Make sure I've not made any mistakes. So we've got one on port 80 with web and web test on port 8080. And then web tests are on web test and web on web. Okay, so in theory, what we should have now is that web should still work, web.learning, but web test. So if we do web hyphen test on port 8080, this should fail. And the reason is because we've blocked it all. I feel like I could leave it there, but I'm not going to because I feel like there's a couple of other things I can do, but this is just going to take a little bit of configuration. So bear with me a moment. I'm just going to knock a few bits together as it were, and then hopefully we'll be able to just show you something else if I do it all right without too many errors. So first thing I'm going to do is jump over to this config map and I'm going to call this webconf. And for some reason that is called 
that. I think it's because I copied it across from the SQL thing. And I'm going to create a new one called metrics. And in here, we're going to create a server which listens on port 8080. And then, uh, no, that won't work. I need to do listen. And that also needs to be listen. Not sure why I've got it as port. Okay, that's fine though. And listen port 80. That will be the default server. So I'll get rid of that, get rid of that. And we will bring that in. I'll just stick an index in there for the sake of it. So I'll know what I'm looking for. Index.html, index.htm, and that will do nicely. And let's let me just have a quick read through. So I've got server, listen, 80, default server. Yeah. And server name, probably should put one of those in really, shouldn't I? Server name. And we'll just set that to underscore. So it will pick up any name. I've got a root, which is fine. I've got an index, which is fine. I don't need to worry about error logs or like say PHP. And then in metrics, I've got server, listen, port 8080. And I'm going to copy that server name across. And then in here, I want location. And I want this to be stub status. I'm trying to remember an end-to-end -end thing I built a while ago. And then I think it's stub on. No, stub status is on. I think that's everything I need. So let me just check that over. So... That should be fine. That should be fine. That should be fine. And that should be fine. I've got all my semicolons in there. Okay. I believe this will work. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it will. And then in here, I'm going to add a volume. So in fact, let's add the other container first. So I've got another container. I'm going to call this Nginx Prometheus. And Nginx Prometheus is going to have a different image. So this will be, I think it's from Nginx. And if I remember, it's Nginx Prometheus exporter the port can just be whatever we'll call it 9113 and this will be http metrics i'm then going to need a volume mount under here so i'll do volume mounts and under here we'll just do name uh, conf will do and then mount path and this will be etc nginx conf dot d and that should be enough i'm just going to revisit that config map so different servers that is absolutely fine this will get mounted into here. And now I just need to add the volume for this. So if I bring it in, we'll do there, volumes. And in here, we'll do name, conf to match the one that I've just defined. This will be a config map, which has a name of, I forgot the name of it, uh, webconf, that's the one. And we have items. And in here, we have a key of default. Was it default? A uh, default and metrics. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And the path is going to be uh, just default.conf. And then I'll copy and paste that one. We'll get metrics and metrics. So, what I'm doing, just as a quick overview of what I'm doing here. So, I'm just going to correct that. I'm creating a new set of volumes from this config map. Each one of these is going to be put into a file within this directory within the Nginx. The reason I'm doing that is because this here will query port 8080 in here for the metrics, basically. That's that's how it's going to work. Now, I don't need to define the container port of port 8080 because that's not relevant in here. It's just, it's enough because if, I'm pretty sure I've said this in previous videos, but just in case, these are all considered local host to each other. So if this query is port 8080, because Nginx in here has port 8080 exposed, even if it's not exposed from the pod, which is what this is, it will still be able to find it. So it's kind of like running it on its own network within the pod. I hope that makes sense. So I've got port 9113 there. I need a new port here. So I'll just grab that, drop it down. We'll do metrics. And I'm gonna do this on 9090. And the target port is 9113. And I'm gonna explain why I'm doing it this way in a moment, okay? So, I've got port 80 for Nginx, port 9113 for that. So I'll just quickly check this over again, just as a final eye. So we've got the Nginx pod on port 80 with the volume mounted. We've got the Nginx Prometheus pod. We've got the volumes defined, which pulls in this config map, which I'm just gonna make sure all these are terminated correctly. And that's a colon, not a semicolon. So I'm gonna do kubectl, apply F, and it'll be workloads, main, and the config map. And then I'll go ahead and apply web. So that's applied. So I'll do kubectl, get pod, no space learning. Okay, so that's working. That's great. Um, I'm totally freestyling this now, you may have noticed, but I figured it's good to do port stuff as well, not just the label stuff, because it's useful to know. And it's it's important to know because you're going to see some of the problems you might hit if you try and use service ports in your network policy. So over here, I'm going to delete that and delete that because they're doing nothing anyway. And I'm going to call this allow default port 8080. And then I'm going to add a new field in line with the from tags. Let me just make sure that's actually in line. And this is going to be ports. It's going to have a protocol of TCP and a port of, what do you think? 
Is it going to be 8080 here? Or is it actually going to be these ports here? Well, remember what I said, everything is pod level. This is applying to a pod, not a service. So whilst the service will route through to those ports, it's the pod level we are restricting or allowing from. So actually the port's going to be port 80. And if I wanted to allow say, okay, so let's imagine this port 8080 on this pod here, this, that's mapped to from this is another API endpoint, okay? And then this one here is Prometheus. This is getting accessed by, you know, this is the metric, sorry, and this is getting accessed by Prometheus, okay? So if that was the case, we can't put 8080 here because that's the service level. We have to put 80, which is the pod level, okay? So even though this is saying allowing default 8080, it's actually allowing port 80. That's what it's doing in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. And actually before I do, I've just noticed I need to put hyphen test on the end of there because we need to target the test web that we've created. So let's go ahead and apply that. We'll jump over here. In fact, before I do, let's put it on port 8080. I just want to show you that it doesn't work on port 8080 because that's the service port, okay? So I'll do curl web-test.learning and just to show you, it won't root through from the service. If I put 8080 on the end, it still won't root through. Now, if I change this to 80 and apply that, we'll see what happens now. Bang, there it is, it works. Because again, it's at the port level, on the pod, not the service, okay? So that's that's something you're gonna have to remember there. If you're setting something up, ignore the service. Yes, stuff might access it via the service and the port on the service, but in reality, it's the pod level that this is happening on. So with that in mind, if I wanted to do 9113, obviously that's not gonna work, nothing set up for it. But what would I do here? Would I do 9113 or 9090? Which one would I do? because I'm going to be accessing it on port 9090, right? But again, it's not the service level, it's the port level. I just want to drill that in because this is something that's tripped me up many times in the past when I was learning it. And I'm sure it will trip you up if you don't know it now. You may have hit it a few times before yourself thinking, oh, just open the service port, it's fine. Don't do that, it won't work. So I'm going to create a new from, and this from is going to be from DNS Utils test and i'm actually just i'm going to leave the name there now but you know i'd call this something like allow default to web test or something something like that and, and it's good to be quite descriptive in your name so when someone reads a network policy they know what it's doing that is something i would say is a good convention to follow so this time we're going to say this one here dns utils is allowed to access the api endpoint dns utils test is allowed to access the metrics endpoint okay pretty straightforward and same selectors in terms of the pod and the namespace because it's all coming from that same namespace the only difference is this is dns utils test now so i'll apply that again and over here we'll try 9090 and we'll see that fails we'll try 9113 we'll see that fails but over here we have a result and now we're accessing the ports if i put 9113 obviously it's not going to work because that's not the surface port we access the service ports as end users as robots in other pods that are accessing things but the network policy is applied to the pod port itself not the service and that is where i am going to leave it i was going to show the ip block section here but i'm not going to do it because in the past there has been some known missing features from Cilium, which if i remember rightly if i do i think it's network policy state on google so if i bring this in i believe it will be under the kubernetes networking section so we find networking kubernetes networking network policies and i think it's under here yeah there we go so network policy so no missing features from the kubernetes network policy so this this and port rangers so ports will work but the port rangers thing remember i said the network plugin needs to support it this does not they have issues they are going to get them fixed and they are planning on trying to backport all of their new features that they've added into their own network policies back upstream to the original network policies but to do that everyone else will also need to support them so it might take a while for that sort of stuff to go upstream but this is why I'm not going to show you IP block simply because it doesn't work. So, I mean, it, it does. It says set with a pod IP. But if you're curious about the IP block, have a play. You can go to this documentation here and you can have a play around this yourself. So you might say that you're allowing it from your local home network, in which case stick it in there and it will work. But I haven't got another network I can test it from for you to be able to do that. So I'm going to have to just leave it at that point. But I'm hoping that that's been useful for you. So that's everything I'm going to show you about network policies. Now, I could have touched on the IP blocks. You know, I, I was going to but it was already getting a long video and I feel like I've covered enough with the ports and the label matching for the IP blocks to make sense. Hopefully they do. If they don't, have a go with it. Have a play, see what you can get working. If not, hit me up in the comments and ask me any questions there. As always, I'm available. I'm more than happy to answer questions as you may have seen in previous videos. So yeah, by all means ask. I'll help where I can. I'm gonna say it one last time, pod level, not the service level. Make sure you are focusing on the pod ports when you are dealing with network policies, not the service ports, okay? Because service just routes through, well, maps through. So yeah, just wanted to say that one last time to really hit it home, okay?
I'm done now. I'll stop talking about network policies and we'll talk about what's in the next video, which is either going to be ETCD backup restore. It could be service accounts and all back. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I've got a list here as long as my arm or as long as my arm against the screen or it's a long list. It's a long list. Okay. So I'll pick something off that list and I'll get into it. I had an order up to now, but now I'm kind of feeling like there's other things that might get slotted in to where the next video is going to be. I, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure which one I'm going to go for. So it's going to be a bit of a surprise for you, I guess. And I'll just see you over there.